friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we are clear with the structure of carpel, let us look at a very important topic of placentation. Just now I was talking about placenta, right? That it is, what is placenta? It is a tissue-like structure which connects the ovule to the ovary. So here we will see what are the different ways in which the placenta can be organized. Now there are many different ways in which placenta can be or there are many different ways in which ovules can be connected to the ovary. So that is what we will see in placentation. So it is nothing but the arrangement of ovules within the ovary. So how the ovules are present within the ovary. Now there are many different types of placentation like marginal placentation, axial presentation, parietal placentation, basal, free central. So these are the five types of placentation that we will discuss in the next few slides. So now I think all of you are clear with what is placenta. Right? So it is nothing but a ridge of tissue that bears the ovules. So just to just for a quick recap, let me once again tell you what I mean when I say placenta. Because even I start explaining about the different types of placentation, uh, I mean if you are not very clear with what is placenta, you will not be able to understand it. So let us suppose this is my ovary, right? Now inside this ovary, ovules are present. So let us suppose this is how the ovules are present. Now these ovules are connected to the ovary with the help of a tissue-like structure or a cushion kind of structure. So that cushion is nothing but a tissue. So this cushion is the placenta. And these are my ovules. And this is my ovary. So now you understand. So placenta actually acts as a tissue which connects ovules to the ovary. So I would give you a very simple example from your day to day life. For example, we all sleep on the bed, right? But on the bed, now the, if the bed is made up of wood, the bed is going to be real, real hard. So if you directly slip on the bed, I mean, you will not feel comfortable, right? Because it is very hard and it is not comfortable to sleep. So, if you place a cushion, so what do we do? We have a mattress or a cushion over the bed. Because the bed is hard, now you have a cushion and you can sleep over that cushion. So that cushion actually connects you, to, attaches you to the bed. So similarly here, the placenta attaches the ovules to the ovary. So we will now see how the different how are the different ways in which the ovules can be arranged in the ovary? So let us start with the first type that is marginal placentation. The name itself gives us a hint marginal has something to do with the margin. Let us see what it is. Here the ovary is one chambered. So the entire ovary will be just one chamber. It, there is no division of chamber. Placenta develops along the ventral suture of the ovary. So it is just along one margin where you actually see the placenta. Ovules are born on this placenta forming two rows. Now as soon as I take this example things will be crystal clear to you. So if you look at a pea, what do you see? You actually see that on the ridge you have a tissue because the the P which is actually there, I mean this entire structure is P, but the edible part is the ovules. These are the ovules. These circular structures which are present inside the P are nothing but the ovules. Right? Now, if you look at these ovules, how are they connected to the ovary? They are connected by along this margin. So can you see a layer of tissue here? So this line which is drawn here is actually representing that layer of tissue. So that is why the ovules are born on the placenta and two rows are formed. If you look, I mean, if you imagine when the pea was closed, how would it have been? 
it would have been like all these ovules were just one after the other. So it basically forms two rows. When you actually open it, you can see there are two rows being formed. So this is known as pla marginal placentation because the placenta is formed along the margin. The next type is axile placentation. What happens in axile placentation? The ovary is multi-chambered. So now you just don't have one complete ovary and inside that you have so many ovules. Now the ovary itself gets divided into multiple chambers. Now how do they get divided? That we will see here. So here the ovary is sectioned by radial spokes with placenta in separate locules. So I'll just take the example first. Let us take the example of a tomato. So when you look at the cross section of a tomato, I mean when you cut tomato for salad and if you look at each piece of tomato, how do they look like? They look somewhat like this. Now this entire thing basically represents the ovary. So here you can see that there are radial spikes which actually divides this entire thing into different chambers. Right? It is dividing it into different chambers. Now each of these chambers is given a term known as locule. Each chamber is called a locule. Now where are the ovules present? Where are the ovules? Ovules are nothing but these small structures which you see inside. Right? So these ovules are attached along the central axis. So if you see, this is my central axis, the axis which actually connects it. So these look, so these things are present near to these axis in the inner angle formed by the septum. So each of these part is known as septum. So if I diagrammatically try to show this, this would be somewhat like this. Now the radial spokes will actually divide the ovary into septum. So each of now each of this boundary which actually divides it into parts is known as septum and each of this portion is known as locule and where do we have the ovules? The ovules are located like this. So this is the ovary, this entire spherical structure and this is where the ovules are arranged. Now due to this kind of arrangement of ovules, the ovary becomes multi-chambered. It gets divided into different locules. Right? But when you, now this is what, whatever I am showing here is nothing but the cross-sectional view. So when you actually view it, I mean from sideways, it will not look like this because this is the cross-sectional view. So when you look at it from sideways, the side view of the ovary would be somewhere like this. This would be, this is how the ovules will look like. Right? So here the ovules are attached along the central axis. Examples are okra, tomato, lemon. These are some of the examples. So if you look at okra, which is also known as lady's finger, you can actually see if you look at the cross section. What do you see? See, this cross section is again divided into separate locules. Correct? And in each of these locules, the ovules are present towards the central. See, the ovules are present like this. Right? But this is the cross-sectional view. But when you actually view it in this fashion, I and mean when you cut it in between, this is how the arrangement looks like. That is, the ovules are born along the central axis. So this is the central axis basically. Like when I am viewing the cross-section view, I am not able to see the central axis. Central axis is this axis. Right? So if you cut it in this fashion, you can actually see that the ovules are all attached to the central axis right okay so this is axile placentation so now let us move on to the next type of now the same thing is also observed in lemon so in lemon also you can look at this picture and you can see that how uh, the ovary is multi-chambered and how the ovules are arranged the third type is the parietal placentation. So here again the ovary is one chamber. So it is not divided into separate locules. 
the ovules are attached to the inner wall of the ovary so that means it would be somewhat like this if this is the ovary let us suppose this is the inner wall of the ovary so on the inner wall you will have the ovules attached like this so this would be the placenta because these are the ovules these circular structure and this bigger thing is ovary so what is connecting ovules to ovary this tissue so that is placenta so this is how it will look like so example is papaya mustard melon so look at the picture of a melon the musk melon where do you see the ovules here so the ovules are connected to the inner wall of the ovary this is ovary so this is basically the placenta the tissue and then this is the ovule similarly if you look at papaya so there also you can see these are the ovules and this is the outer layer i mean this is the outer layer and this is the inner layer of the ovary so within the ovary in the same shape the placenta i mean the ovules will be present so this is an example of parietal placentation so here the ovules are arranged along the periphery of the ovary so no septum is present here so here you do not see any uh, no different locules being formed or the multi chambered ovary nothing like that is there so the entire ovary is just one single chamber right so now if you try to have a side view of this how would this look like here the ovules will be arranged somewhere like this the fourth type that is the basal placentation here again the ovary is one chamber there is no septum no separation of the ovary ovary into different locules here placenta is at the base of the ovary and that is why the name basal placentation so how would this be it would be somewhat like this let us suppose if this is the ovary so here would be the ovule so it is at the base of the ovary so single ovule is attached to the base so we do not have multiple ovules in this case for example sunflower marigold these are all examples of basal placentation so in this case if you want to have a side view like how the ovule would be it would be somewhat like this this is the ovule so it is present at the base of the ovary right now similar to basal placentation there is another type of placentation which is often uh, spoken about is apical placentation where instead of uh, being at the base the ovule is present at the apex of the ovary that is instead of this kind of a structure it is somewhat like this the ovule is present towards the apex so this becomes apical placentation the fifth one is free central placentation so here again the ovary is one chambered placenta arises as swollen central axis that is why the name central placentation due to the presence of a swollen central axis so ovules are attached to the central axis example is dianthus and primrose so here if let us suppose if this is the ovary the central axis of the ovary will be swollen like this and on this central axis the ovules will be present somewhat like this so this is how the arrangement would look like so talking about examples dianthus and prime rose are some of the examples of free central placentation so in this case the ovules are formed on the central column not connected to the walls so here you can see now how do you differentiate between this type of placentation free central placentation and parietal placentation in parietal placentation the ovules were on this wall whereas in this placentation the ovules do not touch the walls the walls of the ovary remains untouched right okay 
So now let us have a quick review of the five types of placentation which we discussed. The first was marginal. That is clear, right? Whenever you think of a P, you will remember what is marginal placentation. On one margin, all the ovules will be attached. Next was axial placentation. There, the ovary will be multi-tempered. Remember a tomato. So, so many locules and on each locule, the ovules are present along the central axis. Third type was parietal placentation where there was no septum, one single ovary, remember a papaya. So, there the ov ovules were present along the inner wall of the ovary. Fourth type was basal where one single ovule is present at the base of the ovary. And free central placentation where the ovules are formed on a central axis such that the ovules do not touch the walls of the ovary. So that it will not touch the walls but it will remain connected to the central swollen axis. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.